Good morning. And Lishana Tova. I'm Stephen Alexander, a 17 year old senior attending Columbia High School, and I've been a member of Oheb Shalom Congregation my whole life. In the spirit of Rosh Hashanah, I first want to express how incredibly honored I am to be here speaking in front of you, how thankful I am to be part of the Oheb Shalom community. I want to start my speech off with a bit of an unorthodox story. As some of you may know, I've had an unconventional journey into Jewish adulthood. Two months before my planned bar mitzvah, COVID-19 struck, and all of my plans had to be scrapped. Although the original June 2020 date was not possible, the sole option in 2020 was a virtual bar mitzvah on Zoom. I spent years attending the B'nai mitzvahs of my friends and my family, and I couldn't imagine having mine not be the same as everybody else's. The following year, I was offered an in-person option at Oheb Shalom, but it would be limited to 10 people in the sanctuary. In my mind, I still couldn't do it, so I did what any typical 13-year-old would do, and I figuratively and maybe a little bit literally, stomp my feet down and refuse to talk about it. <laughs> the months turned into years, and the big elephant in the room remained this elusive bar mitzvah. It became a running joke, with people asking, when are you finally going to have your bar mitzvah? So how did I finally take that leap and pull the trigger? Last year, my grandmother fell ill. And while she was fighting for her life, I couldn't imagine her not celebrating one of the most important milestones in my life. So I told her, Grandma, you have to pull through so we can finally have our dance at my bar mitzvah. Each and every time that I visited her in the hospital, and then in rehab, and then when she finally got back home, the first thing we discussed were the bar mitzvah plans. When I met with the rabbi to put this all in motion, her face lit up like a tree on Christmas Day. <laughs> or, you know, to be relevant to Judaism, like a menorah on the eighth day of Hanukkah. <laughs> and I, I know, it's Rosh Hashanah, so let's say an apple dipped in shiny honey. That one works. Uh, so once we committed to a date, Kanner Kistner retaught me the Torah tropes. I learned a new Haftarah, and last June, at the age of 17, I finally became a B'nai Mitzvah. A Bar Mitzvah, my bad. Um, and the best part of it all was my grandma was there. And now, she's watching on Zoom today give, while I give this speech. So, hi grandma, I love ya. <laughs> now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my childhood at Oheb Shalom. Years ago, when I was a student here at the Oheb Shalom Zeman School, it was a chore to say the least. But the students here at, um, at the Zeman School today have something, or more importantly, some ones, that I never had. Gavin Hirsch, the education director, and Beth Hendler, the Zeman School youth director. During my time at the Zeman School, we had four different directors, each with their own various qualities and benefits. But we are so fortunate as a congregation to have recruited such remarkable people, the best that I've ever seen, who have brought stability and incredible programs to our Zeman School. After I graduated the Zeman School, I joined the teens program. I, alongside many others, work as a Madrakim counselor who assists the teachers at the Zeman School. Now, if you ever see Beth and you ask her about me, she'll say I was sort of a terror when I was in seventh grade. You know, the kid that causes the teachers to want to run or quit or maybe hit the wine even though it's not Shabbat. Um, yeah, I was that kid. But during the last five years, as Beth would say, I have become such a, a dynamic madrich and always go above and beyond. This is undoubtedly due in part to you know, me outgrowing my awkward preteen phase, 
but it's also due in part to the environment that Gavin and Beth have created, nurturing my desire to be a better person, a better employee, and a better Jew. Interestingly enough, two years back, Beth recommended me for an internship position with the communications director here, who taught me such incredible skills, many of which I continue to use today for school, personal projects, and, of course, Siemens, uh, the shul. In fact, it's because of these skills that, as with last year, I was able to prepare the book of remembrance that you'll hold on Yom Kippur and the membership directory that many of you hold today. I'm so grateful that they give me this opportunity, a high school sophomore, junior, and now senior, the opportunity to do these things. It seriously amazes me whenever I receive an email from Michelle Strasberg, our executive director, or have a conversation with Vanessa, the bookkeeper, or Rachel, the membership engagement director, or Joanna, who's in the office doing literally everything. And every time, they treat me like an equal, like an adult. Two weeks ago, I came here with my mom to present gifts to Taylor Murnick, the most recent bat mitzvah. Congratulations again to the Murnick family. As I was walking in, I said hi to Kyle, the security guard, and Geb, the custodian, and many others. And every time, my mom asked, how do you know that person? And I explained, there's just such a huge sense of community here at OHEP. As I've gone through high school, I've learned that finding a community of people can be tricky. Last year at Columbia High School, I saw, I saw posters attacking Jews, swastikas on the walls, and anti-Semitic protests just outside the building. Just this past weekend, in fact, at the Zeman School, a seventh grader explained to me how following October 7th, he was told by a friend to, quote, stop being Jewish. Isn't that just a horrible thing? And this was a seventh grader who was telling me this. So yes, it is challenging to find that group of people who share similar sentiments, who can support you and offer you the resources when you need it. But as long as I can remember, Oheb Shalom has been that resource for me, a place filled with incredible people who you can trust are incredible. Now more than ever, it's crucial to have strong synagogues, to teach our kids, the teens, the adults, even the older members, that not only is it okay to be Jewish, but it's something to be proud of. Our freedom to be Jewish is something we have all worked so hard to preserve over generations, so we deserve to be proud of it. As my parents say, Lador, Lador. From generation to generation, we are connected through our heritage. As I've been filling out my college applications, Oheb Shalom is all over them. No, literally, it's all over them. The admissions officers will probably think I spend all my time here, and I do spend a lot of time here, because what I've learned is that when you are willing to make the most of something, you will get the most in return. And Oheb Shalom has so much to offer. As I prepare myself mentally for college, I'm grateful for the lessons that Oheb has taught me. Because despite everything going on around the world right now, I feel comfortable going off to a college campus and being a Jew. I feel proud of it. So this is the point in the speech where I'm supposed to ask you all to consider donating money to Oheb. And although I've gotten pretty good at asking my parents for money, this one is new for me. Donating is not something that will apply to everyone in the same way. But what I do hope you will reflect on is what Oheb means to you. And consider what the, this, what the synagogue has given to me and what it could do for so many other people. Lorraine, our president, um, and our free will campaign, campaign chairs, Paul Schechner and Stan Spiegelman, told me when writing this speech, Oheb Shalom cannot run on membership dues alone. 
the dues only cover a portion of what it costs to operate. It actually costs $5,600 per family, and memberships don't cover all of that. So this was massive news to me, and perhaps to you as well, because I didn't realize that we depend on every single person here to make the contributions to the free will campaign. These contributions keep the lights on. They keep the sanctuary and this beautiful building active. And they support the incredible staff who've had such a huge influence on me and many others. Supporting the Jewish community, whether on a college campus or throughout the world in general, it all begins at the local level. It starts right here by supporting our synagogues. So let's get to that 100% participation in the Free Will Campaign so that we can continue to connect, so that more kids can grow up here with a love for Judaism, families can continue to make lifelong friends, and this sacred connection that bonds us together can be preserved and cherished for generations to come. I know what Oheb Shalom has given to me, and none of my experiences would have been possible without the generous contributions of so many of you. So personally, and on behalf of our community, and on behalf of our synagogue, thank you for your generosity. I'm wishing you all a very healthy and a very sweet new year, and I'm praying for this peace and safety of Israel. Lishana Tova. Future